Well, hello there and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers for January 6th, the day of substantiation. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of substantiation. Well, we have us an image of oh, what appears to be, boom, a butternut squash mounted to some brackets, which is bolted to a surface. That's right. Does that speak to the day of substantiation? Hey, who's to say? Uh, but not altogether all too important, the uh, visual representational image there. Uh, not when it's January 6th, then it's ostensibly somebody's birthday. No, what's important around these here parts in that case is wishing you a happy birthday. That's right. So happy birthday. Uh, but if this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be, I hope you had a happy birthday. Uh, but for everybody else who's joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the January 6th birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's a roll some dice. That's right. This is the die cast, a birthday broadcast. So I like to live up to the namesake, but I do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And here I rolled a five and a three, four and eight. Now, what is synchronicity? You're probably wondering. Uh, well, my friends, a lot of times we get out into the world and we're very singular or narrow of focus, laser, if you like, on the things we need to get accomplished, uh, or maybe just going through on the commute to uh, work there. We got the blinders on, so we're not necessarily seeing a lot of the things going on around us, or the minutia of things, if you like. Uh, so this is an exercise to get those blinders off. And why do I say that? Well, I say that because as I I've heard it told the universe or the powers that be will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or our aspirations. But if we got the blinders on, hey, we might not notice such things. And so this is an exercise to get those blinders off, to look for a sign that we can't mistake. That's right. Something that we're apt to notice. Your daily numbers. Something agreed upon between you and the universe. That said, you don't have to go with the numbers that I rolled for you, but it is advisable you take your own set of dice so you can ascribe directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. But once you've figured all that out, I don't know, pick yourself a spot somewhere you like to go in the middle of town, say, like Town Square perhaps, and uh, you roll yourself a directional value time limit and set off. But like I said, get those blinders off, all right? Start taking in everything around you. You never know, the day might start to take on a little bit of a theme. You might start seeing things possible pop up every once in a while. Yeah, you know, like when somebody mentions a car and then you start seeing them everywhere. Uh, like they're just somehow miraculously appearing out of nowhere. Well, the thing is, those were always there. You just weren't looking for them. And so this is the case here. You want to be looking for things that might start popping up everywhere. It's kind of a, a reassurance uh, that the universe is there with you. Who's to say, maybe you start seeing butternut squash everywhere. I don't know. Let's go with that. So you roll your first time directional value. Uh, say you get off to maybe uh, down a street. Maybe you end up on a corner there and you, you haven't seen anything uh, of note. It's just the everyday goings on. Well, I'd say look around, take a time, take a moment to compose yourself. And yeah, maybe you see the street sign and it just so happens to say, boom, you're on 8th Avenue. I would take that as a sign that you're on the right path. Hey, maybe even a bus pulls up and it's the number eight line. I would say that's another sign. Maybe uh, roll the dice, uh, get a time value there, get on the bus. Maybe it just so happens you have perfect change in your pocket to do so, when otherwise you don't typically have change in your pocket. It's a synchronicity kind of thing. Coincidence, a lot of people might say, but I would say they're kind of the same thing. So let's stack up some coincidences, all right? Get out there, see, taste, touch, feel a little bit of the magic, and maybe as the bus takes off, maybe you don't even want to be on the bus. I said, roll yourself a time value to see how long to stay on there. Maybe around about that time, that time value comes up. You spy somebody on the bus who's wearing something, I don't know, that just stands out. It's like an anomaly. Hey, you know what? I would take that as a sign to say, hey, you know what? Let's go with that as my, uh, my, my sign there, the anomaly. So wait until that individual departs the bus. Take that as the opportunity to do so as well. Maybe you just so happen to notice you get off on the uh, 53rd uh, stop there. Could be. 
the universe telling you, yeah, that's right. You're on the right path. And uh, hey, you know what? Maybe that individual notices you following them. Hey, it's, that's okay. That's all right. Just be forthright, transparent about what you're doing here. Show them your dice. Show them this video. And you, you never know. They might go, that's just crazy. They go, well, yeah, I know. It's pretty nuts, the synchronicity thing. And they go, no, not that. Well, that's, that's kind of crazy too. But what's more crazy is it's my birthday too. Hey, it could happen. I use that example a lot, but uh, that's just the kind of, it's that extreme kind of thing that might just so happen to pop up. And you never know, they might join you because in this life, people are after the magic. That's right. They want to see, taste, touch, feel a little bit of it. And I think this is the perfect day to do so. Get out there on your birthday and find some magic. It might just so uh, happen to be that as you guys set off, uh, maybe he was going to a farmer's market or she and there you go what do they got at farmer's market that's right butternut squash mounted to brackets on tables perhaps that's right so maybe that's the theme of the day uh, that being said I think you get the idea of synchronicity so get out there see taste touch feel the magic and let the universe show you it's with you on your path all right let's dive in with the birthday read shall we your month is january your day is the sixth your sign is 15 to 17 degrees capricorn of the capricorn 2 period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal earth all right january 6th the day of substantiation Substantiation is the central theme in the lives of January 6 people, exploring or pro, uh, proving for themselves and others the truth of any given situation, be it metaphysical or pragmatic. Such an urge to make sense of life can manifest in many ways, from philosophical speculations to a basic search for the best way to live. Even the most material-oriented July 6 people, or July, January 6 people, usually believe in a divinity, a nature, or a universal spirit or soul. And for them, their physical existence alone can be proof of the wonders of a universal force. And the most spiritual of January 6 people seek to embody intangibles in their everyday existence through devotion, love, duty, and sacrifice. And they display an interest in every physical manifestation of the spirit. And their interest in the world is not usually so technical as it is philosophical and poetic. But though they tend to be highly subjective individuals, they express far out thoughts with great clarity so that others may understand. And therefore, regardless of profession, they are often teachers in the truest sense of the word. Highly courageous individuals, those born on this day, are not averse to facing danger. They recognize the power of dark forces, but at the same time can radiate an innocence and light which softens the hardest hearts and wins over the grossest skeptics. True believers, their inner visions remain unshakable through the hardest trials. And this is not exactly a belief in themselves, but a belief in a power greater than themselves, which somehow moves through them. Several difficulties may arise for January 6 people in the course of their explorations. Perhaps the most obvious of these is that they will see proof for their ideas everywhere and come to believe that everything happens has uh, to have a special significance for them. Another is that they may feel a great need to be followed, worshipped, even adored for bringing the light to others. And finally, they may prove too demanding for some who prefer to take life more casually and have little or any need to be taught uh, or to subject their observations to the constant verification process demanded by January 6 people. Whatever can be said about those born on this day, their reactions are real and their opinions honest. They may be seen as unrealistic and needy by some or simply dismissed by others as naive, but basically they do not change, even with the onset of maturity. Uh, but by retaining a childlike attitude of wonder and awe, they are often many steps ahead of their negative critics. 
and they will in their own time find, through experience or perhaps study, uh, what is most suitable for them to devote themselves to in life. Well, all right, how about that for a birthday breakdown? A little narrow a focus, I would say, but within that focus, as I often like to say, they expanded out, provided a lot of value. Things of interest to think about. And uh, this, uh, of any of the days I've gone over, sounds rife for some synchronicity there. You might just take it up on that. Uh, that being said, hey, I like to provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just read, uh, maybe make some connotations with previous days or the Zodiac period in general, and just to correlate things that I have uh, uh, found interesting, if you like. So let's dive into it, shall we? Uh, January 6th, the day of substantiation. Exploring and proving to yourself and others the truth of any given situation. Uh, the reading claims you have an urge to make sense of life anywhere from philosophically to practically. Uh, so physical existence alone isn't your only concern. You're also open to, if not interested in, what exists beyond. And to that end, I would also argue, within. All right. And having a philosophy degree and having uh, traveled the world in the military, I'd say I totally get it. All right. And the reading breaks down this uh, through a focus on a duality of the material-minded uh, individual and also the more idealistic, spiritually focused uh, but I'd like to think this element of expressing thoughts and ideas with clarity for others to understand is universal between the two. Uh, and perhaps in relating those ideas and those revelations of yours to others, it won't just be uh, fundamental to your search for the truth, uh, but may extend that inclination to uh, whoever you may reach. All right. Uh, instead of just a, a means to affirm uh, what you potentially discerned, is the truth. That's right. Uh, having said that, the reading claims you're courageous individuals that's not averse to facing danger, and you can recognize dark forces and emote an innocence and a light uh, that's uh, a most captivating relation of how you may go about winning over the most difficult of audiences. Uh, so it's kind of a very idealistic way of relating the concepts uh, if you do, in fact, embody the traits conveyed. Um, I'd also say that it seems to take into account uh, the way you approach uh, the world in the very writing itself, kind of the voicing of as much. Uh, to say relating your inner visions remain unshakable through difficult trials and a belief in a higher power to move through you uh, versus having the power in yourself is a uh, quite romantic way to see it. So, and I, I think they kind of did that by and large here for you. They might have thought about it and says, hey, you know what, this is kind of a romantic individual. Let's kind of elevate the writing a little bit. Whereas with some more practical individuals, it's kind of concise and to the point. They don't really dive too into the, uh, the higher ideas. Um, and even I think you get the point, the uh, voicing. I just appreciate they kind of did that here. I'd also say that this kind of stuff is, uh, is humbling in a way as I personally think the power is in you as well, okay? It's nice and humbling to think that it's something else that's moving through you, uh, but don't discredit your own value and what you're bringing to the table. And I say that uh, it might not matter to you in the scheme of things, but I, you were the one that had to tap that well to find that inner power or that light. So, uh, you know what? Give yourself some credit, I would say. Um, and uh, let's see here, though it probably doesn't matter in the whole scheme of things, just because you're getting to the end regardless. Um, uh, so there's much to be said for this day, and I only really got through about two thirds of it here on the notes, um, as narrow a focus as it was, but I, I, I saved the stuff I didn't get to, and I kind of seeded it through the rest of the, of the sections we're gonna get to. So we'll address that as it comes up. Having said that, let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right, those born on the sixth day of the month are ruled by the number six and by the planet Venus. Those ruled by the number six are magnetic in attracting, but also in expressing sympathy and admiration. And for January 6, people, the added influence of Saturn, which is the ruler of Capricorn, enhances loyalty, but also tendencies to hero worship. And the Saturn-Venus connection can indicate a highly unusual, complex love life with painful dilemmas. Often love becomes the dominant theme in the lives of those ruled by the number six. All right. This one was um, 
pretty highly personalized for you, even though they definitely took a little bit of the boilerplate and changed some things out. A lot of the times they'll just kind of tap on that last sentence to kind of personalize it here for you. And so while it kind of sounded boilerplate, it definitely wasn't. Um, that being said, hey, let's dive into the numbers of planets and see what else I had to add to it here. Uh, the number six in the planet Venus for traits of magnetic attraction and expressing sympathy and admiration. That was kind of a new one here, if I, memory serves. Uh, and the reading claims the added influence of Saturn lends to enhancing loyalties and tendencies toward worship uh, as well. Uh, the highly unusual complex love life with painful dilemmas is also a new entry here. Um, though it happens to other folks too. It's just not the typical boilerplate they throw in. Now, it doesn't say where you're, uh, uh, you're doing the worshiping or being worshipped, but uh, uh, based on the breakdown, your great need to be admired uh, for bringing the light, so to speak, may clear that up. All right? But I also want to say I, I saw somewhere in the breakdown where it said it's the other way around. So who's to say? It might, uh, might be a duality there, if you like. Uh, the conflict that exists between the constrictive, otherwise uh, conservative planet Saturn and the romantic Venus may also speak to not just seeing proof of your ideas everywhere and your need to not only share such things with other individuals, but your need to verify the truth of things, uh, irritating others and frustrating you in the process. That's right. Um, there's a, a conflict between Saturn and a lot of other planets, at least in so far as uh, was brought up with the Sagittarius Capricorn cusp. In this particular uh, period, uh, Saturn seems to be bolstering things and helping the uh, positive come out. So when this popped up here today, I was a bit shocked because I, I was getting used to Saturn being a, a constructive force here for you. Uh, because it was not at all the case with that other period. Uh, and here you kind of bucked that trend. So I don't know if you, if you lend much credence to astrology. I don't really know the first thing about it outside of what I've read here in the book. Um, but if you do face frustrations and such, that may be the reason why. A little bit of conflict there with Saturn and Venus. And uh, I little ad lib that a little bit here. So let's get back through all the thoughts I had just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, here, here again is a little bit of the retread. I fully expected a positive relationship between Venus and Saturn here as uh, it's, been, it's been a through line the past few days. Uh, but this conflict seems to harken back to the Sagittarius Capricorn cusp period where it frustrated almost everyone. Uh, so once again, uh, I, I said all that, right? But uh, that having been said, the like, point of that being relayed most oftentimes, I do it to say, you're not alone. That's right. There's other folks going through frustrations as well. So if you feel a little bit, I don't know, uh, down in the dumps about it sometimes, just know you're not alone in that respect. Uh, assuming the astrology is what's doing it to you there. Uh, that being said, that's what I had to say about your numbers and your planets. So let's move on to your tarot. That's right. It's one of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies if you like even though it's not all that new but hey we don't have to take it home with us and start dealing out the cards to predict our future or however the tarot cards are used so we'll just leave it in the book and uh, what's nice about it is we can sometimes make other connotations through things sometimes so let's see what it has to say the tarot emphasizing this last point is the fact that the sixth card of the major arcana is the lovers symbolizing the love that unites all of humanity through integration of masculine and feminine polarities on the good side of this card indicates affections and desires on a high moral aesthetic and physical plane on the bad side it suggests a propensity for unfulfilled desires sentimentality and indecisiveness January 6 people must be careful of sacrificing themselves for love. All right. This one was a total copy-paste job, except for what they appended on the back end of it. And that's sometimes what happens with the numbers and planets there. They just add that little bit of tacit part there at the end of it. If tacit's the right word, it probably isn't. <laughs> In any event, uh, what I have to say about your tarot. I think I added a little bit here to it for you. Uh, the lovers for uh, the love that unites us all through male and female polarities. Uh, the good side of the card uh, indicates uh, affections and desires of high moral on the physical plane. Uh, but sentimentalities and unfulfilled desires and indecisiveness on the negative side. All right, putting all that out there for you for a little bit of context again. 
Uh, this just seems like a seeming connection to your having a foot in both the material and the metaphysical uh, realms of perspective, I would argue, uh, and the ceaselessly seeking the truth in, in all things. And the reading warns of sacrificing yourself for love, interestingly. And I didn't really pick up on that in the breakdown so much. Um, or perhaps seen another way, giving up your unique natures or your childlike wonder, uh, which may be seen by others as imposing or immature, all right, as mentioned in the breakdown. Uh, so considering all that, I'd say it's a particularly apt card. All right, because you're probably going to get mired in a little bit of indecisiveness when you're trying to figure out whether you should uh, grow up or lean in to the things that kind of fuel your fires there. And I think you know where I land on it. Uh, <laughs> I would say lean in on a childlike wonder. But uh, you know what? Oftentimes uh, I say find a balance. Um, I think that's what maturity is all about. Finding that balance. Uh, that having been relayed there, that's your tarot. So let's move on to your health. Oh, that's right, your health. Those born on January 6th must be wary of their worshipful and self-sacrificing tendencies. They can wear themselves out tending to the needs of others and neglect their own health in the process. Furthermore, they may become devoted to a more powerful individual who demands a regimen which is harmful to them. In January 6, people must maintain balance and moderation when it comes to their own health. Tried and true diets, established forms of exercise, and large doses of regular sleep are best for them. All right. There we go. The balance came up, didn't it? Uh, I don't read ahead. I do it chronologically most times, so I didn't see that coming. Sometimes I'll hit on things as they come up. Maybe it's common sense. Don't want to take too much credit. But hey, let's dive into the health. Uh, they say you must be wary of your worshipful and uh, self-sacrificing tendencies. And if it's coming up again, there may be some uh, common historical denominator for it. Uh, uh, in, in so far as the people born on this day being susceptible to as much. I've noticed sometimes they'll mention some things and then when we get to those born on this day, it's like, oh, that applies to them, 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 them. So I think they take a little bit of it from that. Uh, that having been said, don't neglect your, your health for someone else's sake. All right. That's a common through line for the Capricorns here, as it turns out, though it's usually a sacrifice for their work or the things that they're involved in, like an organization. And then they kind of uh, leave their own self considerations uh, in the trunk of the car, if you like. But for you, it sounds like it's other people that takes that up. And that's not common here for the Capricorn. All right. Uh, this dynamic extending to others influencing as much is new and unique inclusion to this end. Interestingly, uh, and that's what I said there. Uh, diet and exercise are largely breezed right over here, unfortunately. They just said, uh, tried and true diets and forms of exercise. That's an anomaly. Normally they'll tell you vigorous exercise or moderate, or they'll tell you a very specific diet. And for the Capricorn, it came down to uh, diets that help you with your veins and your skeleton, because those are the Capricorn body types. So avoid uh, animal fats for the cholesterol, I'm assuming, because that comes up quite a bit. Unbleached white flour and the like. Um, and then um, calcium for your bones, I would assume. They never really say how to protect your skeleton. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, a largely bleated over, oh, diet and exercise are breezed over here, unfortunately, but maybe the other dynamics are just that much more detrimental to you. Uh, that said, they brought up sleep, all right? That's not common either, but it has been coming up this week. So maybe it's specific to the Capricorn II period. Um, Who's to say? But it's worth mentioning, you know, because as uh, as uh, seldom as sleep comes up, there I think the first time it came up, there was an individual. They said they need to get ten hours of it every night, and I was like, that's crazy. How's the stars determining that? But uh, who's to say? Just maybe take note. Uh, having been said, that's your health. So let's move on to some advice. All right. Remember that it is your life. All right, and don't live it through or for anybody else. Look after yourself, but remain open to sharing with others and serve only that which merits your service. All right. 
what I have to say about the advice. It's always kind of short and sweet, but with that, they almost always provide a little bit of value, I would argue. All right, what, what did they say? It's your life. Don't live it for someone else, all right? You're the main character in your, the story of your life, I would say, all right? And uh, you can certainly play second fiddle if you choose, but is that fair to you when you're allowing the other individual to play the main lead in their own life? All right. There needs to be a bit of a balance. All right. I would argue. Uh, all right. Look after yourself and remain open to sharing, they said. And it can be said of your life story as well. Uh, it's just uh, it, your everyday approach to life and the, and the minutia of everything. I think there's value in sharing the things we find interesting. And even if it's just like, oh, look what that, look at that bug's, bug's doing. It's crawling across the desk in a weird way. I mean, who's to say what opens you up to uh, enlightenment? You know, the, what the Buddha found, uh, they were upturning the crops and then considering the death of the bug is what made him spark to enlightenment. Hey, you know, you might not give much credence to that, but I think the idea remains. We never know what little things uh, we can impart are going to have us caught into some other interesting idea or life-changing event, if you like. Though that might seem like an extreme, I think you get the point. Uh, they said, serve only what merits your service. All right. I would say don't waste your time or others' time with things that they don't or that you don't want to hear. All right. And the same goes for you as well. You don't have to stick around for things that you don't want to hear or entertain. And uh, to that end, maybe it's something you've already considered years ago. You know, like, yeah, I got to get out of here. I got other things to uh, put my time toward. Or, I don't know, just don't let people waste your time, I'm, I think is the point here. Because uh, in a lot of cases, time is precious. Um, but you know what? I think uh, you've got this, um, at least based on the breakdown, you've got this penchant to give to others. Uh, kind of selflessly from the sounds of it. Maybe because you're seeking that worship, who's to say? But um, I don't really see you uh, doing that, cutting people off. So uh, that doesn't seem like the best advice to be given to you in the scheme of things, but I think the idea still stands. So once again, find that balance. Your time is precious. Don't let anybody be a time vampire of it, if that's the case. So a good thing to consider. And even that's your advice, so let's move on to your meditation that's right you get a meditation on your birthday here here we go each person can be a channel for greater powers all right i like this one for you once again each person can be a channel for greater powers i say the last few days the meditations i haven't had any idea how to apply them to the individual that they pertain to here i can see it but that being said, it's your birthday, your meditation. I'm not going to impart what I think it's about. That wouldn't serve you. That's not what a meditation is for. So there's your meditation. That's just for you. Uh, having relayed your meditation, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and see where you got the bulk, if you like. And uh, where you're otherwise atrophied, if you like. All right. Your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths. You're faithful. You're accepting and you're searching. That's interesting. That's a new one for sure. But your weaknesses, oh, let's hold up the objective mirror, but flip it to the side that blows up your face. Yeah, shows off all your uh, your blemishes and the things you maybe you're insecure about on a superficial level there. That's right, your weaknesses. Here we go. Are you ready? You're naive, you're unrealistic, and you're self-sacrificing. Oh, you know what? I think we kind of knew those ones. I think we kind of knew them. That's right. Uh, that being said, I often like to say your weaknesses, you know what? Sometimes they can be strengths. It just depends on the situation, how you frame it, how do you utilize it. Uh, you got to dive into the bag when you need it. Naive, unrealistic, self-sacrificing. Uh, those are kind of hard to pull from and find as a strength, but sometimes uh, being naive about things, it, it, it's an endearing quality, it, depending upon how it's used. So if you get into a tense situation, if you're the guy that's the guy or gal that's naive about what's going on, people might dismiss you, all right? And then you're not going to get your face cracked in, perhaps. I don't know. So yeah, I would say it's a strength in that regard. Uh, unrealistic. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of one for that, but self-sacrificing, you know, sometimes if you're going that extra effort to, uh, prove to folks or help folks out, um, 
I would see that as a strength in some cases. Um, it just depends on the situation there, again, like I said. And sometimes I see these strengths uh, go back and forth, or these these uh, these items. Say, to say I saw impulse go between strength and weakness before. It just depends on the individual. That having been said, I also say that if you do want to get rid of your, your weaknesses or bring them back a hair, your strengths are going to help you do that. Faithful, accepting, and searching. Hey, accepting, you understand your weaknesses, and you're searching for how to overcome them or to bring an answer that helps kind of temper them back, if you like. And you're faithful to that end. You're going to keep going down that path until you figure it out. But also saying that, I, of, I often like to argue that our weaknesses make us who we are. So maybe don't get rid of them altogether. All right, there's your strengths and weaknesses. So let's move on to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, something I like to uh, examine uh, outside of just finding out who, uh, who shares your company is looking at it through the prism of figuring out our passions. Because I think too often in life, uh, you know, I get out and meet folks and ask them what they do and more importantly if they like it and they just don't and I think it's understandable because you get out of school right into a job to make the ends meet and the fatal flaw of as much is that it's probably something you, you don't like to do if we even know what we like to do sometimes we don't um, and so then you just start kind of going up the corporate ladder right and, and then that becomes easy roll out of bed put yourself on autopilot get right to the job you just start running that 10 key like it's, uh, it's, you know, like you're not even there. All right. You're a zombie for as much, but it's easy. We know how to do it. And so year after year, you just keep going. I think you get the point. And on the days off, you just don't put in the time uh, or the effort to figure out what your passions are. And it's, um, it's understandable. It requires time. And sometimes we just need to decompress. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to not only see who shares your company, but what they did to get in the book. What did they do to put their stamp on the cultural zeitgeist, if you like? And maybe we can draw some inspiration from, from as much as we stir our own fires to figure out our passions. But if you already have your, your passions figured out, you know what? just fun to see what lottery you drew. So let's get into it. Hopefully me putting the bug in your ear about your passions is going to help you stir the fires. So we have Johannes Kepler, the German 16th, 17th century astronomer, astrologer, and assistant to Tycho Brahe. It was defined, he defined the laws of planetary motion and substantiated uh, Copernicus's theories. All right, loaded individual there. We have Heinrich Schulman, German archaeologist, businessman, and proved that Troy existed and worked to find Agamemnon's tomb. Uh, I probably said that wrong. <laughs> we have Lou Harris, the public opinion expert and pollster, and uh, he's responsible for the Harris Poll. We also have Khalil Gibran, a Lebanese mystical writer, a poet of the prophet. We also have John C. Lilly, a mind and LSD researcher and responsible for Center of the Cyclone. Also says a psychiatrist and a dolphin intelligence investigator and uh, wrote the book Day of the Dolphin. Or perhaps it was a film, who's to say? We have Alan Watts, a Zen writer and a philosopher. Uh, Sun Myung Moon, a Korean religious leader. We also have Carl Sandburg, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. We also have Nancy Lopez, a golfer and a four-time LPGA Player of the Year and a three-time LPGA champion. We also have Alexander uh, Skriabin, a Russian composer, a mystic and responsible for the Poem of Ecstasy. We also have Gustave Doré, a French painter, sculptor, and an illustrator. We also have Tom Mix, a cowboy actor, Loretta Young, a film and TV actress, in four Hollywood films a year for 25 years, it says. Also a businesswoman and a youth project head. We have E.L. Doctorow, a novelist of Welcome to Hard Times. Claude M. Steiner, a psychotherapist and writer of Scripts People Live. Murray Ian, or Murray Ian rather, Rose, Australian swimmer, triple gold medal Olympic champion. Uh, early win was a baseball pitcher, or may still be a five-time 20-game winner. A Cy Young Award winner. Uh, and a longevity record for a pitcher and a Hall of Famer. 
We also have Danny Thomas, a TV comedian, John Z. DeLorean, corporation head and a General Motors executive, and Sam Rayburn, a Texas congressman and a house speaker. All right, how about that for those born on this day? A lot of, uh, what do you call it, higher minds, if you like. People who had their head in the clouds, ostensibly. And those who were artists, for sure. Just replete with artists there. Um, I was very interested to see that they had like some of the Zen writers and then astrologists and archaeologists. Just ran the gamut today. Um, and even had some politicians in there, people who were a little more on the material earthy level, if you like. So hopefully took some inspiration from uh, those who share your company. But I know it's a big, big ass tall order to figure out your passions from as much. But, uh, you know, like I said, maybe me just putting the bug in your ear about it help you stir up the fires. Because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you're, uh, you're putting your nose to the grindstone to carve out some time to figure out your passions because it's important that we're jumping out of bed eager to get on with our day in the morning and I think a passion or a purpose help us do just that because we should be enjoying life and I think a purpose helps us do as much anyhow that'll be uh, a round and out your birthday read there having imparted those born on this day except to say your season is winter your sign is Capricorn of the Capricorn 2 period specifically and your quality and elements is Cardinal Earth. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's another video altogether. I'll leave it at the end if you're interested in checking that out. But this has been January 6th, the day of substantiation. I don't know that we drilled down on uh, why they might have put the butternut squash on the brackets there. But uh, like I said, not altogether, all too important. Oftentimes, I can't make head or tail of why they do choose what they choose. But this has been The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers. I'm going to fill the link for this book down in the description. It makes an excellent coffee table book or something to just peruse and, uh, I don't know, get yourself higher enlightened for the things that other people probably don't ascribe any merit to. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a perfect book to put out if you have company. Get the conversation started for better or for worse, but it's going to get the ice broken reading people's birthdays for them. So it's used, it, it has a great use for that. Uh, that being said, save, it, save the hassle, type it in, in a browser if you're interested in picking up a copy. Uh, but that being said, uh, the book, not altogether all too important in the scheme of things. But what's important, that's right, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday so once again happy birthday all right but for everybody else who joined us randomly hey i hope you enjoyed yourself found something of value here and you join us for your birthday read and uh before i forget that's right your daily numbers get out there let the universe show you it's with you on your path see taste touch feel smell a little bit of the magic and you'll understand why i brought it up and uh, matter of fact, you probably already know all about it, all things considered, uh, what was going over in the breakdown there. Uh, so that being said, hey, once again, happy birthday. I want to thank you for the pleasure of your time. It has been a pleasure to share your birthday with you. And uh, once again, I just want to say happy birthday, all right? Take care of yourself. And don't be self-sacrificing too much there. It's, it's not good. Or, or seeking that hero worship, all right? People are going to give it to you if they think it's merited. And everybody's on their own journey, right? Same as you. So anyway, once again, happy birthday. Take care.